Max Highlights. And here's your host, Karin Helmstedt. Greetings from Berlin and a warm welcome to our Highlights edition, which this time around include the following topics. Fantasy film, the work of two Brits, is nominated for the student Oscars. Fantasy gardens, transform your backyard with some special effects. And fantasy art, Tim Wakefield turns pop songs into paintings. But we start off with Germany's Tobias Bräuning, who likes to look at things in the minutest of detail. And that means, as an amateur photographer, that he specializes in close-up shots. But he doesn't just content himself with macro shots of insects. Instead, he's created his own elaborate system to turn dynamic drops of water into split-second sculptures. So here's a zoom in on the results and the process. These shapes exist only for a fraction of a second, when drops of water coloured with ink collide. Tobias Bräuning captures them in his photographs, all in the space of a millisecond. It's a very short moment that your eye isn't fast enough to see. Capturing it on film is a challenge and I love it. He works in his studio in the small town of Gomaringen in southern Germany. Capturing the moment requires an elaborate setup, almost like a laboratory. He synchronizes the drops and the camera shutter with the computer and a button. Yeah, this middle ventil this top The center valve drops practically straight down. And the outside ones put the drops on a diagonal path. Then a bit further down the lines cross and the drops collide. Tobias Bräuning is a software engineer. In his photography experiments, he combines his technical expertise with his hobby. A year ago, he started using a high-speed camera to take photos of drops of water. I like the creative part, just creating a picture and combining the shapes and colors. I'm fascinated by the technology. It's pretty amazing that everything can be controlled so precisely and that you can capture the droplets that way. He started photographing drops of water three years ago, at first just for himself, and then for his girlfriend. This year he submitted his work for the first time to the Sony World Photography Award. This year there was a new category, the split-second category, and I thought that fits my pictures perfectly, just a brief fraction of a second, so I gave it a try. And he was successful. The competition has over a thousand entries from all over the world. Tobias Bräuning's photo, Dancing Queen, was among the finalists. Their photos are now on display at the Sony Center Berlin. The prizes are awarded to amateur and professional photographers in various categories each year. There are lots of portraits, there are lots of shocking pictures and also very moving ones. But this photo is unique. Also, it's important to note that the picture has not been touched up or manipulated with Photoshop. Whether he's taking pictures in his home studio or outdoors, Tobias always zooms in to get very close up. There are so many details that you wouldn't notice otherwise. And those are the ones that really interest me. What also fascinates Tobias Bräuning is time, divided into its tiniest fractions, capturing the moment when a raindrop beads at the tip of a leaf, or an insect takes a sip of water, or his favorite, the moment when two water drops collide. 
Well, just as an Oscar seals your fate as a star in the film business, a student Oscar is as good a stepping stone as it gets on your way to the big league. The student Oscars are awarded every year in Hollywood, and one of this year's nominees for Best Foreign Film is Skyborn, which is the work of Jamie Stone and Len Rowles. Now, both are graduates of Britain's National Film and Te Television School, and their 27-minute flight of fantasy is as high on creativity as it is low on budget. This is your dream. Skyborn takes place in the distant future, in a misty wilderness where a boy named Blue lives with his father Gideon. Gideon dreams of taking his son to a world above the clouds in a homemade flying machine. Their first attempts end in failure, and a dangerous failure at that. No, Papa, turn right! The short film is the work of British film students Jamie Stone and Len Rowles. Its central theme is about values such as faith and family. And then if I broke it, it would be a... The father has this, this dream, but the son uh, doesn't really buy into it anymore. He doesn't believe that there's anything else apart from what they know on the ground. Um, and that difference in what they believe causes problems with their relationship. Jamie Stone had the idea for Skyborn three years ago. He wrote the script and storyboarded every scene himself. We wanted it to feel very much like we were in the past, even though it's set in the future, um, which informed a lot of stylistic decisions. Uh, I mean, this is, this is a world so far in the future that it shouldn't feel like... Uh, you know, Mad Max or Star Trek or anything like that. It should, it, it, I wanted it to feel more like being in a 16th century Scottish croft. The shooting last year was very demanding. Stone had a budget of just 15,000 euros and a crew of only students. He also had to have special effects done involving sophisticated technology and even stunt scenes. The team were fantastic, they were really enthusiastic. I mean, we had everybody working for free, but people were really eager to, you know, or at least it seemed that way, they were really eager to, to turn up in the morning and see what we were going to do the next day, because pretty much every day we were doing something, something cool. The team had just eight days to get everything in the can. Jamie Stone directed the entire production. Skyborn is his biggest project to date. The facilities were provided by the National Film and Television School in Beaconsfield near London. Skyborn was Jamie Stone's and Len Rouse's graduation project. There were raised eyebrows when we told them we wanted to make a film fully in fog, but they really wanted us to try and explore how we could do it. Um, so they were there every step of the way, by no means hand-holding, but making good suggestions and you know, sort of really making you question what you're doing. Four months of preparation took place before this studio at the school was converted into a film set. Producer Len Rowles had to be very creative in finding solutions. In the film you'll see these wides that look like they're really huge, but actually they're using all of the space um, that we had available at that point. They cover the room's walls in white sheets. The fog machines ran non-stop. They helped set the scene for the film's post-apocalyptic wasteland. The whole of production was a major challenge. I mean, um, just, the, just the practicalities involved of, of matching, matching miniatures to real life, shooting the entire thing in, in fog. The film crew shot some of the scenes with a model flying machine. It was a miniature version of the life-size machine and even had moving parts. The shots of the miniature and the life-sized flying machines had to be cut together seamlessly. It worked well enough to get the film about Blue, Gideon and the flying machine nominated for one of this year's student Oscars. It's an enormous privilege for us to be nominated for a Student Academy Award because the other candidates are all fantastic. It's very on in, um, early on in our careers and the film's career. We only finished the film in February and this is the first thing it's gone on to do. So it's really, it sort of means that it's connecting with audiences and that's a really good sign for us. Can I do that? 
Len Rowles and Jamie Stone are already planning their next production, a feature-length version of Skyborn. Well, a good portion of fantasy goes into the work of Judith Mann. And she's the woman to call if your garden needs a bit more atmosphere. Mann trained as a pyrotechnician and her rather unique business idea is to create special effect installations for your backyard. Which means you can have a twinkling fairy woods one minute and a haunted hallows the next. So we went to see her at work. Special effects, more commonly found in films and concerts, help transform gardens into something unexpected. They are the creations of this woman, Judith Mann. The 41-year-old architect long worked as a pyrotechnician, creating firework displays. Now she's making special effects available for ordinary gardens. I work just like any other movie special effects designer, using fire, water, fog and various other weather phenomena. But I arrange them in a way that's easy for the customer to operate. And so they last as long as the customer wants. In her studio, she and her co-worker develop the prototypes that create effects like burning water or that fill a garden with fog. That's what they're working on now. And it's a constant process of trial and error until they work out the solution. Not only can fog in this long, narrow garden in Siegburg near Cologne look good, it also irrigates plants. The price tag, about 7,000 euros. The owner, Inge Siebel, calls her garden an oasis of calm and relaxation. We like nature, and we have relatively many birds here in the city and squirrels, and we want to enjoy them. A garden that makes you feel at home. That's what gardens are all about. Sometimes Mann tinkers with a project for a whole year to get the effect she's looking for. So far, she's finished 15 installations. Most of her customers are homeowners and business people in Germany, Austria and Switzerland. Mann has been installing special effects in gardens for the past three years. And there's always a challenge. The pumps for creating fog are custom made for each garden. Different nozzles produce different kinds of fog. And when an installation is finished, Mann still gets a kick out of seeing the results. It's always totally exciting when you turn the pumps on for the first time and see what it looks like, and whether it's what you were expecting. After 10 hours of work, the first test run. Mann's goal is always to create an experience that speaks to the senses. When relative humidity rises, it amplifies more the smells and scents that plants produce. And suddenly you're standing in this fog surrounded by these smells. It's a fantastic sensation. Fog that comes up when you want it, at the press of a button. Inga Siebel is looking forward to entertaining her friends with her special effects garden. I think it's beautiful and that we'll have lots of fun with it. So I'm glad that we did it. Great job, Ms. Mann. <laughs> special effects as a component of landscape design. Judith Mann is pioneering a new way of producing spectacular results in her client's garden. Well, it's one of Germany's biggest names in fine porcelain, and its trademark crossed swords are a real find for collectors all over the world. Meissen porcelain comes from the town of Meissen, that's in the eastern German state of Saxony, but their latest venture has taken them to the Italian design capital Milan, and it's there that the firm hopes to branch out into interior design. 
This 16th century palazzo is now called the Villa Meissen. It's the new home of a Meissen porcelain subsidiary in Italy. Brands like Dior, Ferragano and Prada are also in this upscale neighborhood. For Meissen manager Christian Kurzke, Milan is the place in Europe where interior architects and designers gather for ideas and inspiration. Augustus the Strong gave us the mandate to spread the glamour and glory of Saxony to the rest of the world, and especially to the royal courts of Europe. That's why Meissen has to go where the industry is centered. And the structure for that is here, in Milan. The villa showcases the Meissen home collection, with everything from furnishings, pillows, lamps, luxurious architectural tiles lined with platinum, even jewelry. The line shows that Meissen is far more than just beautifully patterned dishware. However, some critics say the traditional brand is diluting its image. I'm against overextending the brand, modernizing it in a radical way, or taking on outside influences just to compete with the MS brand. The traditional handmade porcelain objects that made Meissen famous are also featured throughout the display. The porcelain manufacturer spent more than a million euros renovating and equipping the luxurious villa a big investment for the company. Financial security is always an interesting issue. We'd have security if we didn't invest. But then we also wouldn't grow as a company and be able to secure jobs. All business investment involves risk. The Villa Meissen in Milan is only the beginning. The company is already considering additional showrooms in other cities. Well, imagine you could listen to your favorite song and see it as a picture at the same time. British artist Tim Wakefield can make it happen, and he's done this with many a hit song. He creates what he calls sound waves art by manipulating the digital recording streams of well-known rock or pop songs. And when he then gets them signed by the musician in question, well, those images are a huge hit in their own right. Yellow by Coldplay, represented by pictures of sound waves. A single note turned into an image and printed on canvas. An artwork by Tim Wakefield. Chris Martin's written, look at the stars, look how they shine for you. All four members of the band have signed it. I mean, it couldn't have been... It couldn't have been a better start for the project. You know, it was about the biggest song in the world at the time. Four years ago, Tim Wakefield had the idea of transposing famous songs into images. Musicians immediately agreed to collaborate. This is a note from the song Galvanize, signed by the Chemical Brothers. A note from Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody, with drummer Roger Taylor's signature. This piece, a note from Mamma Mia, hangs in Abba's Museum in Stockholm. Tim Wakefield has his studio in this small cottage a two hours drive from London. It's from here that he keeps in touch with the superstars of the international music scene. He's currently working on a piece inspired by Hotel California by the Eagles. The work is to be auctioned off at a charity event in New York. The artist gets studio recordings of the songs directly from the record companies. He listens to the songs note for note before selecting a digital sound wave that he likes the look of. So I will I'll then take that single note and I'll transfer it. And then it becomes... I, I can then start changing the colours. For me, Hotel California is a it's sort of got a deserty feel. So I'd be looking at browns and yellows and ochres, that sort of colour. 
Band on the Run was a 1973 hit by Paul McCartney and his band Wings. Wakefield is especially proud that the ex Beatle agreed to work with him. The work, signed by Paul McCartney, sold at an auction last year for the equivalent of about 7,000 euros. It was one of the hardest pieces I've ever had to do because I, I must have done sort of 30 or 40 samples for him just because I, I just so wanted to get it right. You know, it was such an important piece for me. Um, and then he chose, he actually chose the finished artwork from the samples, which was nice. And again, left copies for him, so. A piece inspired by Catherine Jenkins' version of Time to Say Goodbye. Or by the British rock band Muse. Wakefield's originals can only be bought at auctions. This image from a note of Wish You Were Here is signed by four founding members of Pink Floyd, a rarity since the band hasn't performed together in years. The artwork will be auctioned in New York this fall. Music to hang on the wall, popular with fans and artists alike. Ah, some fantastic tunes there. Well, finally, brewing a good cup of coffee these days requires a lot more than just knowing how to work the filter machine. And as coffee drinker tastes have changed over the years, so have the skills of the people at the coffee counters. Well, Franz Grünwald is a champion barista who now gives courses at a coffee academy in Hamburg, Germany. And we went to see what's on his curriculum. These beans fuel German society. Germans drink an average of 150 liters of coffee per year. It's more popular than beer or even water. And one in every four cups is consumed outside the home. The Hamburg restaurant Truda serves top quality coffee. The owner, Holger Fölsch, sells about 300 hot beverages of all kinds every day. And his customers expect a perfect cup for their two and a half euros. People are making more conscious decisions. When they spend money on something, they want top quality. My customers have gotten more particular. They want something really good. And we have to live up to expectations. He's learning to deliver top quality from a pro. This one in the end is the ideal latte macchiato. One more tip, you never serve a latte macchiato with a straw. Franz Grünwald is a certified coffee sommelier. He's even won a barista's championship. Baristas are food servers who specialize in coffee. At the Hamburger Coffee Academy, he teaches his students about how the pH value of the water, the amount of ground coffee, and the right brewing temperature can improve the flavor of a cup of cappuccino. Even with the best cut of meat, if I can't cook, the steak won't be any good. The same with coffee. I can have the very best beans, but if I don't know what to do with them, the coffee won't be any good. First, the students have to learn the basics. What do the beans look like? How do they smell? A bean from Guatemala might have qualities entirely different from an Asian bean, so it's important to know where a variety comes from. When it comes to the milk, creative juices and the senses come into play. Pour, pour, pour faster till the cup's full. Keep pouring. I paid for it. Chilled whole milk makes the tastiest froth. It should not be heated above 70 degrees. Fill the pitcher 40% with milk and then froth to double that amount. It's a bit like playing a musical instrument. Your right hand is doing one thing and your left hand another. It's very demanding. I compare it with getting a driver's license. I may have my driver's license and know the traffic laws and signs. I might know how to drive. But in a crunch, I still might not know what to do. A coffee machine like this costs about as much as a small car. 
So these courses are only open to professionals who work with similar equipment in their own establishments. After the course is over, Franz Grunwald pays a call to make sure their machines are set properly. Of course, he has to sample the result. If it tastes as good as it looks, it'll be perfect. The cup has to get to the table fast. An espresso tastes best when the patron gets it within one minute of brewing. And there we go. Hope that show was good to the last drop. And until we meet again, all the best from us here in Berlin. And thanks for watching. Bis dann. Tschüss und auf Wiedersehen.